Period. <laughs> the, the most maybe New York. Yeah. But who would ever think, you know, people can respect and even emulate the images in the world in Korea, in Brazil, you know, the whole nine. So I just think that it's just amazing. We were able to, as young men, yeah. you know what I mean, to just see the vision, record the history. That well, you is know, so I, have, I have the same feelings because, you know, growing up in the South Bronx, going to school with some of the pioneers of hip hop, you know, Bambada, you know, Grandmaster Kaz and the Cold Crush Brothers, you know, I was just a chubby little kid with a big afro taking pictures back then. And, you know, here we are 30 years later, our photographs, you know, transcend globally. You know, they're like the focal point for the young, for the youth today to see the images, the humble beginnings of hip hop back in the 70s, you know. And who would ever imagine a kid from the South Bronx in Korea, Japan, London, you know, with, you know, I felt the same way when I put out, you know, my book, Born in the Bronx, you know, I didn't think it was going to do well overseas, or, and it's just been a blessing, it really has. And you know, the, the beautiful thing about what we've done in a sense, I, I really feel this way. I might be wrong, but I think that we helped revitalize hip hop. Our images served as like seeds that went around, went around the world, and I mean, they heard the music, and they had an idea looking at some of the footage, but I think our, our photographs kind of like tied things then, and then with the writing, it, it, gave, it gave a more the, the definitive uh, a view on what was actually going down. You know, I mean, when I look at cats now with, with, with Kangles on and Gazelles and Pumas and Adidas, I'm Those like, are your up. images in the book. Yeah, yeah, and I'm looking at guys from China, from Japan, from Korea, it's like, man, they look like they straight out of my books. So I feel good that, you know, I was able to help you and I both oh, kind of yeah. like revitalize. I, again, I, I subscribe to that because Today's hip hop, so called rap music, you know, recording artists pretending to, you know, is totally demoralizing the culture itself. So I think everything's coming back to the beginning. Yeah. And you and I documented the beginning, you know, the culture, the, the, the wear, the, the, the attitude. And it, it was such a humble, mm. innocent time. Yeah. You know, here we are halfway around the world seeing kids that are, you know, the age of my kids, yeah. you know, doing something that we help document, you know, and, you know, people appreciate our work. And, and I'll tell you, one of the greatest things that I've experienced being here that has really moved me more than anything is seeing how hip hop has become a universal language. Yes. B-boying is a universal yes. language. Our photographs is a universal language yes. where, you know, it does, it's not about language, it's not about culture. You know, you look at it yeah. and you just emulate it, it, emulate. You look at people, all the different people who are here. I mean, this is like the United Nations. Of this, this can end wars. Yes. You got Muslims, you got Christians, you got Jews, you know, you, you know, all different people coming under, uh, uh, Buddhists, Buddhists, everybody yeah. under, under the umbrella a b-boy. It's yeah. like a whole new culture and generation has been created to the point where if taken to the next level, we, we could change the dynamics of the world. Well, we I can mean, do that right now, Jamal. Yeah. I mean, shit. If some of the politicians would subscribe to some of the, you know, rules of b boy and the respect and everything like that, we probably won't have any more wars or anything like that. Exactly. Exactly. And but you know, getting back to it's just I'm so humble. Jamel, so humble that I was invited here to participate in this, and I, you know, I want to continue spreading that, you know, around the world. You know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful feeling that our photographs, our documentation of this culture, you know, itself, folk shows a focal point, a reference point That's where right. people can go back and reference and see, you know, the Africa Bambadas and the Grandmaster Kazes and, you know, Doe's and Kenny Swift who's here who, you know, I grew up with mm. and, you know, Crazy Legs and it's just a humble, humble experiencing. And, 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 so on that, on, on that note, though, so tell us about some of the best photo shoots, best, best experiences in your memory. Like, when you uh, think back on, like, I mean, there were thousands, if not tens of thousands of times where you guys were out there and it was just amazing. But, like, what were some of the more memorable times in your life where you were like, like, man, I am, I am here, like, 
part of history. Well, like, Steve, I gotta be honest with you. I never knew. I did this, and Jamel could say the same thing. I walked around with my camera because I love taking pictures. I love documenting the culture. I love just the whole environment. And you know, and some of my most memorable moments was, you know, the battles between the Cold Crush Brothers and the Fantastic Five in the Harlem world, you know, the, the, the street concerts, you know, the free street, you know, jams in the park, and you know, it's just been a memorable thing. And then fast forward 30, 30 years later, being invited to Japan from, you know, mm. during my exhibit of Born in the Bronze, being invited to London, and here, cultivating in, in being invited to Korea, you know. And, and for me, I think, it was really about the people. I love taking pictures of people, making them feel good. Yes. That's what it was all about. I yes. wasn't fortunate, you know. I didn't shoot a lot of uh, artists, you know, very rare. I shot yeah. common everyday people. And it was something about them that was so special to me. To just approach a father with his child, you know what I mean? To, show, to, 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 to document best friends. You know, that meant a lot to me. And I, I tell you, what, what amazes me here is that one of my greatest joys outside of documenting this event itself is documenting the Korean people. And I fell in love with the Korean people, and I have to say that with all my heart. You know, I had to get away from the hotel, and I had to, I had to go to the cross streets, as they say, the, the road less traveled I went to. And I came upon beautiful Korean people who I learned, I, I, I knew of in my community. I've actually documented them growing up as well, because me and them were the merchants in the community. And they treated me with respect. So coming to Korea meant a lot to me. And I had an opportunity, and it, it I, I, and I challenge myself. I don't speak the language, but I was able to, 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 to show my camera and say, picture. And so many people let me take their picture. No one, no one turned me down. And that was one of the high points of my career. And it, 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 it's something I'll never forget. I mean, the B-Boys were easy to shoot. And that was a joy to document all of them. But to, like, again, to travel to the left and, and, and see the fathers and their children, to see the old soldiers and document them, that's been a joy. So I feel good that I still got it after all these years. Because, you know what I mean? And I guess growing up in Brooklyn, dealing with, with the homies and all that, people that I didn't know, that was one thing. But to come to a country where I don't know the language, and just showed them my book. And I was able to share my book with so many young people, young, young Koreans, you know, who didn't know me, but they looked at the work and I identified with it, and they let me take the photographs. And I must say that I, I've caught some incredible images that I'm gonna put Korea in my next book. There Not only go. the Korean B-Boys and the whole event itself, but I'm gonna show the people of Korea, to give my love back to them and show my gratitude, I'm gonna make it a point to uh, put them in the book. And what, what's interesting about one of my experiences today that blew me away, and I gotta deal with this issue here because it's very real to me. I sat in a garden, and what drew me to that garden was some classical Korean music I heard. You know, the, the, the sound of the violin and the soft voice. And that just mesmerized me. And then that, that made it all sense how, how music is power. Yeah. And how people are all the same. You know, music is a universal language, and people basically are the same everywhere you go. You got your fathers in the South Bronx, you got your fathers in South Brooklyn, you got them in South Korea. So that sums it all up. It's just been an incredible thing. And I got to give shout outs to R16 and, and John, Jay, and Charlie, Charlie, and James, and everybody who put this event together because, you know what I mean? They've been angels on my, in my life, and they've allowed me to see something that I would normally not, not, not see. And it's been a life changing experience. For yeah. Me. So this, I have nothing This has respect. definitely been a life changing experience. I mean, people coming up to me, you know, young, old, you know, just like, you're Joe Conzo. You took those pictures of Bambada. You took that picture of Kenny Swift when he was 14, who's my idol. You know, and it's just a humbling, humbling experience. And, you know, I'd be, you know, I'm grateful to, to you know, John, John Jay and Charlie and the whole Arc 16 gang that's putting this together. And, of course, I mean, uh, TV, you know, and it's just been a, a pleasure. Looking forward to coming back. Yes. You want to come back, you know, soon. Let's, let's, let's keep this going. Man. We got to keep the momentum wide. going. We got to keep have this to. thing going. We have to. We're, we're a worldwide village. We have to. Yeah. Cool. cool. Thanks, guys. Hey, really no, thank you. Much respect. Thank you. Peace, love, happiness, as Ben Barter says, right, unity, guys. strength, and respect right. to everybody. Zulu Nation. Yeah, just meet up online. And then um, uh, it's like it's like a YouTube video. You can yes. post it on your own website, or you can cool. just send it, send the email link out to friends. Yeah. You know.